Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode 139, probably, of the Spearhead Sundays podcast, and it's a celebration episode, guys. It's some of the biggest shit to happen on the podcast ever, okay? I have, over here, I have a cup full of party poppers just for this announcement, okay? Okay? As you all know, this is big news, all right? I, I'm just jumping straight in with fucking big news, all right? As you all know, recently just finished my tour uh, on radio at the moment, releasing videos regularly. Comedy special went well. Guys, as you would also know, earlier in the year, before the tour, before the comedy special, my boss, me, <laughs> gave myself a demotion. I was on jeans, I was on jacket money, $400 a week, and uh, I had to bump myself down, back down to jeans money, $300 a week. As you all know, I pay myself a weekly wage. Guys, the special's out. You can get it on my website, the tour's done. You can't get tickets to that anymore. Videos are coming out regularly. Patreon's picking up. I would like to officially announce that I am back on fucking jacket money. There you go, guys. That was it. That was the announcement. Why did that really hurt my fingers? Is that supposed to happen? Is that supposed to hurt your fingers when you fucking... I feel like my fingers just blew off. Is that what happens? Let me try that again to see if it hurt. That actually really hurt. I think I might have some faulty party poppers. I, um, now I've got PTSD, my fingers, I am on jacket money. Now that one didn't hurt at all. Guys, I'm on jacket money. I'm back up, right? $400 a week. Still, still below, still below a legal amount to pay myself for the amount that I do work. But hey, my boss is a cunt. <laughs> so, uh, it's, it's good to be back, man. What am I going to get? A jacket? I could if I wanted to. I won't because it's so hot, but I could. Dude, it is so fucking hot. And I want to say thank you very much to everyone who came out of the shows and all that grabs the special, buys a t-shirt, supports me on Patreon. You guys are the reason why I give myself a little little bit of a raise because God knows radio pays fuck all. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, man, it is so hot. It is like 36 degrees outside. I reckon it's probably at least 38 degrees in the warehouse because the walls... Uh, tin, and I would say that it's probably 50 degrees in my fucking jeans, because I am telling you, man, it's jeans to 2019. No matter how hot it gets, bitch, I'm wearing jeans. It's almost a song. It don't matter how hot it gets, bitch, I'm wearing jeans. It don't matter how hot it gets, bitch, I'm wearing jeans. It don't matter how hot it gets, bitch, I'm wearing jeans. You know what? I might do that song. <laughs> You know, next year, hey, I might come up with a fucking banger all about wearing jeans in the summer. You heard it here first, Speared Sunday's podcast. Maybe that'll happen. Maybe it won't. Who knows? Point is, man, I'm back. I'm on jacket money. Send me a couple, send me links to jackets you think I would look good in because, guys, I'm, I'm on the market now. You know, I've got my jeans. I've got my black pair of jeans. I've got two pairs of black jeans. That's all I will ever need in my fucking life. I bought a pair of blue jeans and I just don't wear them because I look like a dad. And not like a, not like a daddy, you know. Like every now and then, what I've noticed is when I don't when I don't shave for a bit, when I get my, I've started to actually be able. I can't grow a beard, but I can now grow stubble, like good stubble. Every now and then, when I grow out the stubble, I, I notice the daddy comments from all the from all the fucking from all the fucking object uh, girls out there. I noticed that, right? But when I, whenever I put on my blue jeans, right, those those daddy comments, they they drop the D and the Y, and it's just like dad. <laughs> it's just like oh, father, dad. You know, like not not oh, daddy. It's uh, oh, dad. Like embarrassing. <laughs> That's what I get. So you know, maybe I'll just grow out the stubble, put on the blue jeans, and and hey, man. Drop you off at school and then fucking leave a handprint on your ass as you get out of the car. <laughs> Combine the two. Oh fuck! It is so hot, dude. It's so hot that I um, 
I got an Uber to the warehouse today because I couldn't I couldn't do the public transport thing here. Um, and I had, I had, dude, I had the best Uber ride over here. I had the best Uber driver I've ever had in my life. And I get Uber a lot because I don't drive. I'm a piece of shit and I'm a millennial. So I'm like, oh, Uber, it doesn't cost me money. I'll get an Uber here. I'll get an Uber there. Why am I broke? <laughs> um, I had the best Uber driver ever, right? This dude, he rolls up in a in like a nice van, okay? And initially, I'm like, oh, I'm getting kidnapped. But this guy, he was he was like a, I don't know, I don't know what he was. I think he was like a, he was a black dude, so I don't know if he was African or Muslim or or whatever. But I, it's like you know, just one of those like, I know what color you are, but I don't know where you're from. It's like basically every white person ever. It's like yeah, you're white, but I don't know if you're Irish, Russian, whatever. You're just white. He was one of those dudes, yeah. So he rolls up and uh, and he rolls up and as he pulls up, the windows start to go down and he literally blows me kisses as he pulls up. It was so, it was amazing. He goes, hey, Lewis, how are you? Three kisses straight away. I haven't even got in the Uber. He's already blowing me kisses. Hey, Lewis, welcome. Step in. He said, step in. Open the door for me. Step in. Wonderful. How are you? The air conditioning's on. I'm like, I'm horrible. I'm sweaty. I'm hot. I'm wearing jeans when it's 36 degrees. But you know what? Your kisses have made me feel like a beautiful young girl again. You know? Making my day. That's how I want all 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 Uber rides to start now. If I don't get three kisses, they get two stars. That's my new rule. I'm going to start riding that in, in, in the... Like, you know how they have a section for if you have special needs? Like, oh, you, there needs to be space for the wheelchair... Or whatever. I'm gonna I'm gonna say I don't have special needs, but if you don't blow me three kisses, it's two stars. Three kisses or two stars. That's what I want. Welcome. That's what I want, man. And it was the it was the greatest ride ever. He's like, Do you want to listen to any music? I said, play whatever you want, man. And he went, wonderful. And he kept rubbing his hands together. Oh, wonderful. Wonderful. And he's probably rubbing all those kisses off. You know? Three kisses. That's what I want every time I step into the car. That might be how I start the podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. You know, just three kisses every time I start the podcast. That's how I want every interaction ever to start. And he didn't, he didn't like blow them at me. He just kissed his hand three times. (laughs) Then that was the greatest shit ever. And man, you know what? Had a great chat with him. And then... I got halfway to the warehouse, Luke calls me, so I'm on the phone. He puts the windows up, because it was windy. And he goes, I put the window up for you. And I was like, hey man, thanks. He goes, no worries. Two kisses, okay? Not three, but still pretty good. And he's driving driving me there. I'm on the phone, we pull up, I'm still on the phone talking to Luke. And then uh, then he goes, excuse me, sir. Excuse me, sir. Uh, I just want you, just before you get out, I want you to watch this. And I was like, fuck, he's gonna do a magic trick. And then he he gets on the phone, and he just goes, watch this. And he just gives me five stars. And he goes, there you go, man. Five stars. Wonderful. Three kisses. Five stars, three kisses. And I was like, and he didn't, and he didn't ask me to give him five stars. And you know I fucking did, right? Because he gave me three kisses. Three kisses, five stars, no kisses, two stars. That's the new rule. And it was the best Uber ride I've ever had in my fucking life. You know what? It was kind of just one long kiss, but he slapped himself in the face three times. <laughs> That's what he did. He didn't go... He went... And then added in a slap. You can kind of do it in an infinite amount of kisses if you do it like that. You know, next time you see your mum, instead of giving her a kiss on the cheek, just start going... And then add in the slaps for as long as you can do it for. <laughs> And that's how that's how you're gonna greet everyone from. That's how I start the podcast now. Every, every episode, fucking 140. It's gonna be ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Welcome to episode 140 of the Spearhead Sundays podcast. <laughs> <laughs> and then and then it's and then it's and then you cunts better give me five stars on iTunes. That's how it works. I reckon I've given you guys at least 60 kisses. I want to see those stars. I want to see those five-star reviews on iTunes. That's what I want. Love the podcast. Kisses 
Just that little bit extra. Five stars. That's what I want. And... and <laughs> it was the best fucking Uber drive ever. I've never got fucking... To my destination and kisses. The best. To that guy. Just to that guy. Infinite kisses. Hey, Uber driver, if you're listening... Just for you, man. Just for you. <laughs> oh, shit. It is so hot. But I'm not going to break, man. It is jeans to 2019. And I've been doing... I've been doing it, you know? I'm not fucking around. I'm doing it. And I, I'm... Right now, I'm sitting on a fucking leather couch in skinny jeans with a fucking light pointed at me in a tin house while it's 36 degrees outside. Hey Siri, what's the weather? Okay, here's the weather for today. Here's the weather. Oh, it's 37, which means it's 40 degrees in here. <coughs> Wonderful. I'm going to die. This actually might be a short podcast because <laughs> I can't handle it. Um, <clears throat> what did I want to talk about this week? Um, oh, on the, uh, the Luke and Lewis radio show... Starting Monday, we are going to be on every single weeknight, except Friday, uh, for two weeks from 10 p.m. to midnight, Melbourne only, but the podcast will be updated daily. And uh, we're getting Keel and the video guy in as well. So we're going to hopefully uh, bring back the video podcast, which will be a good thing because the, the radio station, it's been, a, it's been a hassle trying to organize it with them and get them to pay a video guy. So me and Luke are just doing it out of our own pockets. And uh, making even less than, uh, than, than the little amount we do make on the radio. <laughs> uh, but because we feel that it's worth it. I think it's, the videos add so much to the show and it makes it, makes it better for us, makes it more fun. Um, because, yeah, we just like, it's just more shit to put out. That's the, that's the, 2019, it's the year of content. Here, have two videos in a week. And three kisses. And uh, a radio podcast and Speared Sundays. You're welcome, okay? I'm going to die of dehydration. Heat stroke, dude. That's what I'm getting at the end of this podcast. This is the heat stroke episode. Oh, fuck. So, um, I've been gigging I've been gigging heaps this week, man. I think I've done four this week. Just been running around. I, and I so didn't want to go last night. I'm working on new stuff for the next show. Because I'm I just, I don't know. I feel like I'm at a good place now where I'm like, I do the show. The shows go amazing. And then I take the material and I just fucking put it in the bin. Because it's so, it's so easy to just get attached to jokes and be like, oh, this is my best joke. Because, you know, every year you get better. And then every year when you start writing new stuff, it's not as good as your stuff that's done because it's new. And you're like, oh, fuck. I just want, I just want that rush. I want that hit. But you, but you, end, up, you end up just naturally writing better stuff because you're a better comedian. And uh, I really like doing that. So... I'm happy working on new gear. I think I have the skeleton of a new 10 minutes, which means by this, at this rate, if I get to the end of the year, I'm going to have, going to be doing a fucking three hour show if I keep writing at this pace, which I, I don't know. I probably won't. I think I'll just try and stick to making a great hour and a half show instead of like a mediocre three hour experience. Like what is this? Speared Sundays? (laughs) I swear now I'm going to be disappointed by every single bit of service that I get in any industry because I'm not going to get kisses with it. You know? Like, you don't even get kisses when you see a prostitute. Because <laughs> that's that costs extra, you know? Isn't that funny? That always, that always makes me laugh. Like, a lot of prostitutes are like, oh, I'll do anal, but you can't kiss me on the mouth. That's reserved for special people. It's like, all right, man. I guess I'll just enjoy that colon. That was a kiss on the colon, not the lips. <laughs> oh man, what does someone talk about here? Where are my fucking notes? Man, have you seen that? Uh, there's this tweet going around of uh, this this um, transgender uh, woman handball. Right, there's this, there's this transgender woman, Hannah, uh, oh. Oh, right. Oh, it's the same chick. 
So there's this six foot three, 250 pound, which is like 120, 130 kilo uh, trans person who is who was banned by the AFL Women's League for being a 136 foot three kilo dude in a dress playing footy, just destroying the chicks. I swear there needs to be a, there needs to be this whole thing <clears throat> of the transgender athletes. You can't have it, dude. It is not fair. It's like there's a reason why the sexes are like separated, and it's because it doesn't matter how many hormones you take, or if you turn your penis inside out, you're still six foot three, one hundred and thirty kilos, and you have the bone structure of of fucking the Hulk. You can't you can't have that, man. You're gonna kill some women. It's so weird this whole this whole transgender thing of of letting male to female athletes play with the women is is so not fair to the poor chicks. I'm looking at photos of this 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 uh, chick Hannah, this new girl, <laughs> uh, just uh, she got kicked out of the AFL Women's League and uh, then she joined the women's handball team. Which, first of all, I think it's fucking surprising that there is a handball team at all, okay? Why is that a sport? Handball? Nah. Nah-uh. Not a real game, okay? So f- so right off the bat, that's not a real game, regardless of what your fucking vagina looks like. If it's, if, it's a, if it's a natural born one or just one made by a scalpel and a fist, whatever. That doesn't matter. What I'm saying is handball should not be a sport that, that you play if you're over 15. But I'm seeing this 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 shit on Twitter, which as always has made me mad. And it's like this six foot three, um, <laughs> six foot three, one hundred and thirty kilo fucking behemoth. She looks like, and she's playing handball with these poor women who are all wearing um, they're not hijabs. It just covers their hair. Must be some Arabic team, and these poor women are like literally up to this woman's chest. Right, her her giant womanly pecs, <laughs> and her and her colossal female shoulders, they can't even reach, and she's just like barreled through them like a troll from Lord of the Rings, you know when it was surrounded by the goblins and the goblins are all like, ah, oh, we're on the same team, and then the fucking troll is just like, oh, I'm a fucking troll, and just like smashes them out of the way. It's like that shit, but it's handball. It's crazy. I feel like, I don't know, there needs to be some kind of law. I feel like instead of, if we can't, if we can't, because now we're at the point where it's like, oh, gender is, gender is fucking fluid or whatever. And it's like, cool, man. You know what's not fluid? Bone structure and chromosomes. Okay. All right. No matter how many times I try, I can't identify as someone with Down syndrome by adding an extra chromosome, okay? It's the same shit. It's like, yeah, okay, you're, you're a woman, I'll call you a woman, but you can't go and beat the fuck out of my daughter in women's sports. <laughs> I think that should be the line. There needs to be a sport division just for transgender people. And you know what? I would watch the fuck out of that. Because you'd be like, oh shit, man. Whose team are they on? Because it'd be men versus women, but transgender men versus transgender women. It'd be so good, bro. So good. I'd watch that shit. Just a bunch of trans, trans people running around, bashing into each other, trying to grab the ball. That'd be so fucking mad. I would watch that shit. But you can't, I don't know, you can't have this. It's like, it's like that transgender uh, fighter that fought in the women's league and just almost killed like multiple women. Before anyone was like, hey, maybe you not. <laughs> but anyway, to all the uh, the trans people listening, if you if you want to play sport, hey, live your life. Just try not to fucking kill the women. Please. They like let them let them just leave them alone, I reckon. But they already have to deal with their sports being boring and slow. Like, why do they also have to deal with Getting your, getting fucking their eye poked out by your incredibly womanly Adam's apple. Leave them alone. <laughs> oh man, so funny. Okay. What else do you want to talk about? 
What have we got here? One of my podcast fucking notes. Oh, I've been uh, I've been on a uh, a podcast uh, as a guest, which was really fun and really fucking horrible. Make sure you check out the Phone Hacks podcast. It's with Nick Kappa and Mike Goldstein, two comedians, uh, who are brilliant comedians. And uh, uh, I know Kappa quite well. I met uh, I met Goldstein that day, and uh, kindred spirit, man. He's a big cunt, and I love big cunts because I am a big cunt. And uh, we just bonded over being assholes. It was it was the best. It's like I can't believe I haven't met this guy. He's a he's truly a cunt, just like me. Love it. <laughs> I love an ass. I love a douchebag. It's so good. Uh, so this podcast was fucking horrible, right? And uh, but it's very funny. Basically, the um, the 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 podcast is where three comedians, me, Nick Kappa, Mike Goldstein, we sit around a table and we all swap phones and uh, we hack each other. And I had to post some horrible shit. Uh, about uh, going back and and becoming an anti-vaxxer on my page, and that caused a giant shitstorm. I made Nick Kappa post something that made it look like he was in hospital, and uh, we also went through uh, Mike Goldstein's notes for tweets and uh, and jokes as well. And I uh, I knew. See, here's the thing. I knew that the notes probably has, have been scrolled through a few times, but I knew that nobody never would have gone all the way down to the bottom. And I'm like, down the bottom of the notes, that'll be when the internet first started and when you were a worse comedian and they've also sat there the longest, so they'll be the worst ideas. Scrolled right to the bottom, I found some fucking gold on Mike's phone. Found some fucking gold stain on his phone. So check out the Phone Hacks podcast. It's very funny. Uh, my episode was a lot of fun. And uh, it's just a funny idea for a podcast in general. I think they've done a lot of uh, different guests too. Luke Kidgel's done an episode and they've done a whole bunch of people. I think they got one comedian um, who used to be a problem gambler, problem gambler, and then uh, he publicly admitted it and then reformed and he's no longer a gambler. I think they got him to post a photo of a receipt of, a, of like a sports bet receipt saying, I'm, I'm back, baby, with him winning a bunch of money. And uh, just fucking brutal. Like he just had all these people and concerned family and friends reach out to him, and are thinking that he's relapsed when in reality he's just been on a fucking shit podcast. So it's absolutely brutal, but it was a lot of fun. Definitely check out the Phone Hacks podcast. It's uh, and tell him I sent you. <clears throat> um. Oh, speaking of fucking fighting and 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 the destruction of um of bodies, I found this new martial art that's the most metal shit I've ever seen. It's called Leth... Leth I, I'm probably going to say it wrong. L-E-T-F-W-E-I. I think it's spelled Lethway or Lethway. I don't know. It's some some uh, Asian fighting sport and it is the most brutal shit. I just stumbled across it on, um, on Instagram. There's this dude. What's his name? Let me get my fucking phone out. This dude... Um, so... <laughs> there's this dude, Lethway. What is his name? Luke or something. De Lu? Oh, I don't know what his fucking name is. Oh, there we go. King LeDuc. King L-E-D-U-C. And he's like one of the more popular fighters of Lethway. And this shit is... So there's UFC, right? Imagine UFC, but there are no points. You cannot win on points. You can only win if the other person taps or you knock them out and the ref stops the match. If you go the full 12 rounds and it ends, it's a draw. The only way for you to win is to fucking murder the other cunt. It's no gloves and this is the most metal bit. Headbutts are allowed. And I've ne- I don't know, I don't know if you've ever seen someone headbutt someone like properly someone who knows how to headbutt but seeing another man catch a headbutt in the fucking face has got to be the most brutal shit i've ever seen in my life and this this lethway shit is so fucking crazy and this dude that i follow his name is um king Le- king leduc i don't know how to say his name king leduc leduc but they call him he He's really fucking long. His arms are incredibly long, and so are, so are his legs. He's almost got... He's real tall. He's almost got my body if I hit the gym every fucking day. He's really tall. They call him the Steel Giraffe. 
So people are still calling him a fucking giraffe. It's just the difference between me and him is if you call him a giraffe in a negative way, he will headbutt the nose into the back of your brain and you will die. And this guy, I'm just watching videos of this fucking dude fight in Lethway. It looks like the most brutal shit ever. And his arms are so long that this dude just elbows people. Like, from, from, I've only, I've only started getting into it, but his elbows are so fucking brutal. And his legs are really long. His just limbs are incredibly long, and he's, he's very good at headbutting. You literally watch the, like, if you think I have a strong neck, guys, you gotta check out King LeDuc, or King LeDuck, or whatever. Here he is, just explaining how to throw a headbutt. It. And it's just people fucking stick to boxing. That's not how you do a head, but it's way too predictable to arc your back and neck like this. He knows it's coming. So he's saying don't lean back and go forward. The power comes from your legs down. Your legs. Like a sprinter, you push. Second, my neck is stiff. It does not. Neck is stiff. It does not arc back. That's why I tell you guys. You don't arc back. Because all the impact of the head is absorbed on your neck. Neck he just punched himself in the fucking the neck. Part, where your hairline usually start the skull, hard to soft. So my skull to his eyebrow, to the <laughs> nose, to the jaw. So I push off. He's and literally just rocketing head. himself into the fu- in someone else's face. So the, the, it's just it's just fucked. Like this dude is trains his neck so he can headbutt someone else in the nose. It's the most metal sport I've ever seen in my life. <clears throat> and everyone's like, he's apparently he seems to be an amazing fighter. I don't know too much about it, but it looks like he's killing it in Lethway. And uh, all these people are asking, oh, when are you coming to UFC? When are you going to go to UFC? And he's gone, man, UFC is for pussies. I fight Lethway. No points, no gloves, headbutting is allowed. And if you don't kill the other guy, it doesn't fucking count. Like, do you understand how metal a sport has to be for the guy who fights in it to go, UFC is for pussies? (laughs) Like UFC, where I have seen someone's arm get dislocated and then this King LeDuc guy has gone, Hey, dude, I see that, and I raise you headbutts. <laughs> headbutts, bro. UFC is for pussy. If I can't ram my face into another man's nose, get all of his brain matter on my face, hey, that's for pussies. What am I, in kindergarten? I headbutt cunts. So, check, dude, check out Lethway. If you, if, you, if you like fighting at all, check it out. It's the kind of sport where I could see myself training MMA, uh, it's something that I would like to learn, like grappling and all that kind of stuff. But like, it's the kind of shit where to, you'd be going into gym and ramming your fucking head into the boxing bag. I literally watched a video of this dude ramming his face into a fucking tree and opening up a coconut with his skull. It's like, dude, I'm not nowhere near metal enough for that. That is so fucking cool. Holy shit. I'm just, I'm watching a video of this dude getting another man, he's training his neck, all right, this is the real strong neck, I thought I was, I had a strong neck, King LeDuc, bro, check him out, this is the most metal shit I've ever seen in my fucking life, he lives in Dubai, and this video, I haven't watched this one yet, he's getting his training partner to punch him in the neck, holy shit, oh, and there's another guy, holy fuck, He just got two guys to punch him in the fucking neck like nine times and he just eats it. Dude, I, man, this guy's fucking crazy. This is the most metal shit I've ever seen in my life. It's like, it's like, it's a proper blood sport. Man, fucking crazy. So shout out to the steel giraffe, King LeDuc. <laughs> That's the real strong neck. Um, man, my gym's been going really well, dude. I've been, I'm still putting on weight. I now weigh 75 kilos, which is good, uh, which is my previous, well, this is my, it's my best in the last four years, really. 75 is the highest that I've ever weighed. I need to get to like 90. 
I don't want to be huge. I just want to be. I want to be not. Not. Oh, is he all right? <laughs> that's that's what I want. <clears throat> but uh, hopefully, I, I will get there. Um, what else are we talking about here? Oh, uh, I want to know how did you guys uh, like the uh, the last two Lou reviews? I'm f- I'm so stoked to be back, man. It's fucking great. I um I put out the two Lou reviews and uh, dude, let me tell you. Tuesday's episode is already done. So if you want to see it on Monday, check me out on Patreon. Uh, oh no, Tuesday early it'll be up because Keelan has to edit, finish it on Tuesday. So Tuesday afternoon it'll be up early and then uh, we'll be well and truly like a whole week ahead. So we're just finishing fucking videos way ahead of schedule. I think, uh, uh, yeah, 2019 is just going to be every week. It's, it's like no excuses. I have nothing else on. All I have is stand-up, radio, podcast, videos. That's all I'm fucking doing. I don't want to add anything ridiculous I mean, I said this and then someone wrote in the comments, yeah, next minute, 2019, Lewis will have a Netflix special, a TV show, a daily radio show instead of once a week and, and, and a nervous breakdown to contend with, <laughs> which could happen. And hey, I wouldn't turn it down. But uh, yeah, man, I'm, I'm just, I'm super excited to come back. I've, um, and I think Luke is doing the same thing. We, last year for the both of us, it was like setting up and uh, this year it's all happening. And uh, I'm so, so stoked to be back. My videos are going really well. Um, because the channel was was taking a bit of di- bit of a dive there, just because I was not looking after it and uh, not uploading. And uh, hey, man, who would who would have thought that not uploading to your YouTube channel would mean that it wouldn't grow? Isn't that fucking crazy? Um, but yeah, it's it's just good. It's just like the last the last year, last eighteen months especially, I've been so focused on on uh, objectively more important projects. But now I'm I'm stoked to get back to the YouTube thing. I'm going to bring bi-monthly bull back next year. I'm already thinking about stories and how we're going to film it and Vox pops and all that kind of stuff. Uh, it's just, it's just all looking really up for me and I'm excited to create stuff instead of like, Oh, I have to do a video because I, I went through my videos last year and I, I, I remember which ones I did because I wanted to do it and which ones I did because I, I had to. I was like, oh, better do a video. And like, there's such a difference in quality and views. And uh, I'm stoked, man. The uh, Supreme Patty ones have been going well. The, this next one is fucking, I think, really funny. I think that's my, that's my goal. I think that's, that's how I want to kind of stand out on YouTube is I, I really think that I can be fucking very funny. And very punchy. It's just bringing that stand-up comedy vibe into into YouTube and like writing joke jokes, having little mini sketches. I really think that's my lane. Where instead of having talking about outrages or or, or whatever or being, I just want to. I just want to have that thing where like if you watch a video, you know it's going to be fucking funny. Um, and I think I can really do that. Like the the first Supreme Patty one was very funny. The second one was was not funny because it was more analytical but uh i think i I really enjoy just the funny silly shit so i'm gonna do that bi-monthly bull will come back next year and we're looking at just filming with cooking without instructions just filming it all in one go 20 episodes in two weeks and doing it as like a more of a web series type thing than a filming it once a week um but i don't know when that's going to come in because we don't know what's happening with radio next year we might have more we might have less we might have the same so we'll see but uh, at the moment it's fucking videos every week minimum and i reckon at the rate that keelan and i are going at it could be twice a week so hey man we'll fucking see now uh how long are we going for here 33 minutes what else do i want to talk about is there anything else i wanted to talk about here um oh sweet okay warehouse guy reckons that we can get air conditioning in here but do I want to fucking pay for, pay for that? It's like, dude, oh, I'll get a warehouse. It'll only cost the rent. Yeah, fucking neck minute. Okay. Um. What else do I want to talk about here? Dude, Twitter getting rid of fucking... Oh, this is what I wanted to talk about. Okay, so uh, on the on the radio, if you listen to the Luke and Lewis show, um, I, I ran a bit of a social experiment. I can't. I don't think I talk, I don't think I talked about this on the podcast. So uh, what happened was we ran a little bit of an experiment because obviously I know nothing about fucking sport and sport never comes into my life, right? So we ran an experiment where I did not watch the AFL Grand Final Australian football. I didn't watch it, so I didn't know who won. And uh, I just did a thing where if I was not actively avoiding the results. How long would it take for sport to enter my life? Because the AFL Grand Final, one of the biggest sporting events we have in Australia. Like, everyone hears about it. But I thought, I don't think I'm going to hear about it. If I don't 
hide from it, but I don't seek it out, I don't think I'm going to hear it. It won't be in my news feed. I never see sports in my news feed. And I, no one's going to tell me about it because everyone I know knows that I don't give a fuck. So I just thought, how long will it take? So anyway, it took about two or three months for me to find out. And how I found out, what we said on radio was I was in Tasmania. And uh, this story is mostly true. But we had to change a big part of it because if I told what actually happened, we wouldn't be able to say it on radio. So the story we told on radio, and I'm going to tell you the real story after this. The story that we told on radio, (laughs) the story we told on radio was I was in Tasmania and uh, there was a guy who was telling me about uh, football and he had lots of tattoos. And he was saying that, um, oh, if, uh, if Collingwood, one of the teams... If Collingwood wins, I'll get a tattoo of them with the premiership. But if Collingwood loses, I will get a tattoo of an eagle kissing Eddie Maguire on my arm, who uh, is the, the who owns the team or is the coach or whatever. He's involved with the team, right? That's what we told on radio. And then he ended up revealing that he got the tattoo of, of, uh, of an eagle kissing Eddie Maguire. That's the story that we told on radio. Now, the tattoo that I actually saw, it was not an eagle kissing Eddie Maguire. It was an eagle, and this is a tattoo that someone actually got. It was an eagle coming on Eddie Maguire's face. I saw that fucking tattoo. It was just like him just covered in cum. And it was like giant gobbets of it. (laughs) <laughs> like it was it was like a whole it was a ho- almost an entire sleeve worth of just eagle cum all over another man's face and I just really had to tell that to you cunts because holy shit that might be the funniest thing I've ever seen in my life of just another man getting a tattoo of an animal coming on another man's face because his sports team lost the fucking grand final <laughs> and hey every now and then you know guys For the most part, we don't change anything for radio. But every now and then, you have to change something. (laughs) All right, should we get into the miscellaneous bit at the end? I'm, uh, I'm gonna have a heat stroke. Heat stroke. Have a heat stroke. I can't even speak. I might be having heat stroke currently if I fucking sit under these lights on the leather couch any any longer. I feel like I'm in a sauna. All right, let's get into the emails. Oh, that's right. We've got a fucking good one today. We have a fucking banger. A wonderful fucking email. All right, where are we going? Uh, miscellaneous bit at the end is the part, worst part of the podcast. It's the part the, at the uh, the end of the podcast where I answer questions sent in by you. So if you have any questions for me, if you need some life advice, or even if you have just a funny story, send it through to podcast at com, and I will answer it if it's funny. All right, so... First, we'll start off with uh, a person called Jenny. Hey, Lewis, call me Jenny. You might remember me from the Wollongong show as you made fun of my name. Um, oh, and also, sorry to Wollongong for not making it into the tour vlogs. Uh, camera person lost the footage, which is great. Sorry about that. I was really bummed because that was a fun show, but uh, the footage is not around. Hey, uh, Lewis, call me Jenny. Um, so my best mate, let's call him fuckhead. I won't. I'm going to call him Frank. Uh, he's in 18, is a, is a high school dropout, works at Macca's. Oh, the subject of, of this email is, I need help kicking my mate up the ass. Uh, I'm Jenny. My best mate called Frank is 18. He's a high school dropout, works at Macca's, and complains about not getting shifts at every opportunity imaginable. So he wants to work at Macca's as much as possible. Fuck that. He's left home to make room for family members being able to get out of fostering. What does that mean? Make room for family members being able to get out of fostering. What does that mean? So he can make room for family members being able to get out of fostering. Do they want to foster other kids? I don't know what that means. He's moved out. And he's paying rent as a result of it. He's not doing TAFE or any form of study, even though he has stated he wants to go and study again and is being and is just a dumb fuck in general, i.e. getting back with his ex who put him into hospital due to so much stress. What kind of motivation or advice can you give Frank to help him get back on track and any advice I can pass on or you would like him to hear from you would be appreciated, king cunt. <laughs> Have a shit one. Um, 
There's nothing you can do. It's not your life. Uh, <clears throat> Look, if Frank, Frank, if you're listening and you actually want advice, dude, no one's going to do it for you. Okay? Your friend has good intentions, but it doesn't matter what fucking words they choose and how beautifully they arrange them into a sentence to motivate you. At the end of the day, you need to fucking take control of your own life and do it, okay? Because even even me saying this isn't going to make you fucking do something. You are. You can use this and, and for, for motivation for fucking a week, maybe. But motivation doesn't last. You know what lasts? Discipline. And discipline is something that you can learn. Motivation is so fleeting. So often, most times I go to gym, I don't want to go. But I fucking go because I have the discipline and I built that up over time. I've now got myself up to pretty much five days a week. I rarely miss uh, gym unless I have to go somewhere instead of gym, like a meeting or something. Um motivation counts for nothing, man. Motivation will motivate you to, to stop. You watch a video, you'll stop looking at your phone and that, that motivation, that feeling will last for maybe half an hour. What really fucking lasts is, is the discipline that you teach yourself to wake up at the same time every day, to eat properly, to do this, to do that, to make sure you go to work on time. Or if you're like me, to make sure even though you don't, you don't have a boss and, there's, and employees are only in twice a week, you still go to work and you get to the fucking warehouse at 10 a.m. every fucking day because if I don't do it, no one else will and my career will be over. Frank, no one's going to do it for you. Suck it up, cunt, and get some discipline. Start small. Start with, oh, I'm going to start waking up at 9 a.m. instead of 12. Or if you're getting up early, hour earlier. Instead of getting up at 8, I'll get up at 7. That'll give me time to have a healthy breakfast. You start small, man. You get your discipline. Uh, now, for Jenny, you cannot help your friend. You can tell them that you want more for them or you can you can tell them and you can talk about how much potential they have. And I've fallen into this trap where I've tried to fucking help people who, who have potential but aren't working or whatever or, or try and raise people up or you start with someone and then they don't work as hard and they fall behind. It, you, at the end of the day, you are in control of you. You can help someone, but you can't do it for them. And at some point, helping them hinders you. So, I know your mate might be cool or whatever and you hung out with him in high school, but at the end of the day, if he doesn't start moving and elevating himself in life, is he worth hanging around? Is his banter that good? You know what I mean? Like you want to surround yourself with people who are more successful than you or who are trying to be more successful than you and and all the time working harder. I think that's one rule of, of life that, that I've never even seen it be disproved. If you hang out with losers, you'll be a loser. You are who you hang out with. So hang out with people more successful, hang out with people who work hard, Hang out with people who, uh, who are hustling and who have bigger ideals, who are working towards the same thing as you. That's why me and Luke are such good friends. We're trying to be the fucking best. And at, at the moment, we're keeping up with each other. And every time he, he, he makes a move, I'm like, fuck yeah. Whereas I've been around people where every time I make a move, they go, oh, fuck him. He took that opportunity from me. You want, to be, you want to surround yourself by people who are working hard to improve themselves and who are genuinely happy when you win instead of jealous or insecure is a better word than jealousy because that's where it all comes from is, oh, oh I, I, that should be for me. Uh, I'm self-conscious. That's where it comes from, right? So Frank, take your thumb out of your ass or you will... Uh, you're going to lose friends who will elevate you and you'll just hang around with fucking losers who work at Maccas. Um, and that'll be, that's your decision. That's all I have to say, my dude. Now, let's get on to the fucking banger. Okay. So, you may remember two episodes ago, I believe. A uh, Maybe I should uh, read the first one first. I got an update. If, as you know, updates are my favorite fucking emails. So... I got this email uh, 
two episodes ago, trying to find my loser soulmate abroad. And uh, a brief thing of it is, uh, G'day cunt, big fan of yours, keep up the good shit. Here's my story, hopefully you can help me. I'm 24, living in Budapest, working in a bar. About a year ago, a girl moved in alone to the flat below me and through the windows, I've been listening to her singing, playing with her dogs, listening to music. Scary shit. I developed a big crush on her. Um, I can tell she's British uh, and from... Watching from my apartment, I've seen she's decent looking and has a few dogs. To top it all off, I've, he- I've heard her listening to your podcast every Sunday, so she's definitely my soulmate. <laughs> um, I've been waiting so long, building up the courage to speak to her, but every time we've crossed paths, it's been a bad time. All I know is that her dog is called Little Ricky, and she said her name once, but I've never heard it before. I have no idea how to spell it to find her online, and now I've noticed she's moved out. The current tenant has no contact details, and I have missed my chance. Hope you can read this out on your podcast, and maybe she will hear it, and we will find a decent way to get in contact. Podcast, Facebook group, maybe. If she's listening, I'd love to have dinner, and maybe she hasn't seen the special yet and wants to watch it with me. Please help. I'd hate to think I've missed my chance with the only other loser in the city, and definitely one of the very few female losers list losers who is not a denim wearing lesbian now i uh, reacted to that how hopefully you did and i said that's very fucking creepy dude you can't just watch women from uh outside their apartment and listen to what they're listening to and uh do that you should just say hello and not be a fucking weird cunt because that's scary and uh guys hang on let me get a party popper guys I have here an email from the girl. (laughs) I'm going to clean all this shit up. Okay. This one is titled, Hey bitch, it's me in Budapest. Uh, This is the... uh... Oi cunt. I'm not going to say her name for her own safety. (laughs) Hey cunt. Remember that podcast from two weeks ago? A guy seeking a girl in Budapest? Yeah, it me. My name is Sarah. Um, I've been a big fan since the Face Beef days. Thank you very much. Needless to say... Oh, by the way, before I got this email, I got a Snapchat from her of a video of her listening to the podcast. And then uh, it was talking about her dog, Lil Ricky. And then she moved the camera down to her dog and then just pulled up the uh, the name tag of the dog. And holy fuck. So funny. I've, I, I'm going to put that in a podcast group. You will have already seen it by the time you listen to this, unless you're a Patreon supporter. Um, needless to say, I nearly had a fucking stroke listening to your podcast. For a moment, I thought exam stress had finally got the better of me and I had lost my mind. I was absolutely raging that the last sane moments I would experience would be spent listening to your fuck-ass podcast. <laughs> I'm not going to say this guy's name either. Hang on. Did he say his name? Because she's saying a different name. Oh, Did he? Hang on. What did he say? He didn't say his name. So I'm going to change his name to Dave. Um, Dave, my ex-neighbor, was far from subtle about his crush on me. It was obvious he was intentionally listening into my apartment. Oh, fuck, dude. Because he made it sound so smooth. Like, oh, I've just happened to notice. Nah, man, you were in the bushes. Fuck. Uh, Dave, my neighbor, was far from subtle about his crush on me. It was obvious he was intentionally li- intentionally listening into my apartment. I noticed that he would start blaring the same music as, as me. Holy fuck. That's so weird. So you would be playing a song, and then all of a sudden you would start s- hearing an echo of the song, and it's just him sitting there on Spotify trying to sync it up from his apartment. <laughs> like a virgin, like a vir- virgin, like v- v- virgin, and it's just him trying to sync it up. <laughs> that's terrifying I noticed he would start blaring the same music as I do trying to sing the same songs along with me oh fuck that's so scary so he hears you singing and he's like this will make her fall in love with me like a virgin that's terrifying Uh, And yes, Lewis, he must have heard you screaming cunt into the darkness through my apartment windows enough to find your podcast. You're welcome for that extra Hungarian fan. Hey, hey, Dave, welcome aboard, you creepy cunt. Remind me to stay the fuck away from Hungary. Not to get into too much detail, but things progressively got creepier. He put his post into my post box, so I would have to go upstairs to return it. Oh, and then did he fucking do a Louis C.K. and answer the door with his nutsack out? 
Doorbell ringing at all hours. Standing outside my windows. Fuck. Going through my trash. Fuck. My flower pots being thrown about and emptied out when I was asleep or away. Searching for a spare key. Oh, dude. Dude, that's like some stalker shit. And much more that I won't get into. I reported all of this shite to the police. Uh, fuck. This fella is easily old enough to be my dad. Well, he didn't say that because he said he was 24 in the fucking email. And he has adult kids of his own. He can't find me on social media because I don't have it. I've since moved to a new apartment, so don't worry, all is well. Even if he does find me, I've bought pepper spray, have well-trained dogs who know how to protect me, and I'm taking self-defense classes. I will never lose sleep over him again. Bet you never thought someone would use your podcast as a way to stalk some bitch, hey? Shit. Best of luck, Lewis. I hope this whole shenanigan amused you. In general, I want to off myself every time I listen to your podcast, but this one reached a new level. Hope to eventually make it to the right side of the world and catch you live sometime. Have a shit one, Sarah. I feel a little bit guilty. <laughs> oh, fuck, man. Um, yeah, Dave, if you're listening, leave her alone. And uh, to get serious for a moment, that's creepy as fuck and you can't treat women like that. And uh, not okay, bro. Look after your kids. And Sarah! Sorry! <laughs> oh, fuck. That's crazy, man. Um, how long are we going for? Oh, almost an hour. I'm going to die. I'm, I'm literally... Dude, guys, I'm literally fucking wet. Uh, well, any other emails here? Um, oh, this is a, this is a long one. Uh, I will... Am I going to do this? Uh, I'm not going to do this one. I'll save this one for next week. All right. Thank you very much, guys, for listening. That's the end of the Speared Sunnies podcast. If you like what I do, please consider supporting me on Patreon. I'm recording this one on a Friday, so you guys will get it on a Saturday if you're a Patreon supporter, and I'm progressively working towards getting them earlier to you as well. Same with the videos as well. We've uh, 70% finished this Lou review that'll be out on Tuesday. So I think I really do think, like... This week, we're going to be a couple weeks ahead by the end of the week anyway. And it's all happening. So uh, if you want to help uh, the shit get better, if you want to help me pay for the editor and the warehouse and all this fucking new gear that I've been getting, and uh, it just hel- it just improves the show so much. And that's the reason why I can be on jacket money instead of fucking jeans money. So thank you very much. That's the end of the podcast. And I will talk to you next Sunday. Until then, guys, I sincerely hope from the bottom of my heart that you have a shit one. And... Uh, I'll see you next Sunday. I'm so hot. I'm going to fucking die. Oh, Monday, the Luke and Lewis radio show is uh, four days a week and the video podcast will return. So stay tuned for that. Share that around. That'd be really great. And uh, Tuesday's Lou review is going to be a fucking banger. All right. See you later. Have a shit one. Cunt.